Okay, welcome back. Uh, today, so we're going to be learning about while loops. And in our textbook here by the Python, um, we've got this example here. And it's okay the way it works. They've set a number and they've set a variable equal to a Boolean value of true. Then they've said while running, which is essentially like saying while true. The difference being that you can change the value of running inside the loop to make it stop. They ask for a guess, they grab the input number, change it into an integer, test to see if the guess is equal to the number, and say congratulations you guessed the number if it's correct. Um, then they set the running equal to false, which means they found the number, stop the loop. But it doesn't stop here, because what happens is, remember we're in an if statement, right? So if, if this is true, that means none of the others, the elif and the else, those will not be executed. After running equals false, this loop um, goes back up and it says while false and it stops at that point and now we say done. Okay. On the other hand, uh, what if the person didn't get the number right? If the guess that they gave out is less than the number, then it'll say no a little higher, it'll skip the else and then it goes back up to the loop, in which case running is still true because the only time it gets set to false is after they correctly guess the number here. So as you can see, it's, it's a fine example. It's a fine example. Um, so today we're going to play with while loops a little bit. Uh, but before we do, I want to give you guys some more resources. So if you go back to my website, here um, under getting started book and of course yes we, we're using the byte of python right now but it is kind of sparse in terms of the information that it has regarding uh, while loops so if we go to more free books to the open textbook library nice this is a wonderful site i found so for example this first one how to think like a computer scientist think python and if you click on it, and um, we can perhaps just go to the online copy here and uh, go to, well, you could also download the PDF, but let's see if there is, uh, let's go control F loops. Yeah. How about let's look for while. The while statement, iteration. Okay, so there's information here that you can go over as well in section 7.3. Um, that's, that's, they're actually using a function there, so perhaps not the best one to start with, but uh, in any case, the other website that I recommended was if you go back, there's other books too that you can go through. I'm just trying to show you that there are other options uh, for resources. If you go back under control flow here for the while, I've also got uh, this link to the real Python website, which also goes over. I'm hoping at this point that you've looked at that and you've gone over it. Okay, so let's actually get into some code. So let's go to Genie and let's make a variable. Say, let's say n equals Actually, before we begin, let me just show you the infinite loop. 
So we can, while, like an if statement, accepts a boolean. Okay, I'd like you guys to follow me with this. Now, of course, now we don't have syntax highlighting because uh, we haven't saved this as a Python file yet. So let's do that. And I'm going to save it as... Uh, Okay, and we'll call it while one. So now we have syntax highlight. I'll just say print, and I'll say hello. And now I'm going to run this, F5. And notice it just keeps printing hello uh, a, quite a lot. So in order to stop this, I'm going to have to hit Control C. So I don't have a uh, screen key on. So that's something I forgot. So let me turn that on. OK. So now if I run this, you can see it says hello and if I hit control C now it stops um, now another thing you can do do you guys remember end equals quote quote if I run this now you can see it, it looks a little bit more impressive and on the last line you can actually see uh, it printing as fast as it possibly can. By the way, the one thing that's holding it back here is putting output towards the screen. It would go faster if it actually didn't have to, but I mean, that's the whole purpose of the program. But I'll show you a different one. So if I, if I put a space after the hello and I run it, now it looks slightly different because there's spaces between the words. Just to give you an example of how fast this is working, but you can't really tell here because all it's doing is it's printing. You don't really know how fast it's passing by the screen. Um, so why don't we change this program, shift home, and I'll go delete there. And why don't we set a variable, let's say n equals 0. And then I'll say inside here, right? Uh, oops, I'll say n equals n plus 1. So what that does is it's called, it's incrementing n by 1. So in other words, if n was, see this, this is pretty cool because uh, this is why Thani is really an awesome, let's go control A, control C, and I'm hoping that you'll learn some of these shortcut keys as I'm teaching. That's the reason why I have screen key on. Okay, so if we go to Thani and we paste this in, um, at this point, um, I'm going to print n. Okay, so no strings here. This is just all an integer, and. If, let me see, do I have to save this to run it? Yeah, I do. Okay. So, uh, I wonder if I could call it the same thing. Ah, do you want to override it? Yes. Okay. So now, you see, this isn't as impressive because you can't really see what's happening down here, but you can see that Within an instant, uh, I'm actually up to like 7,000. So imagine how long it would take for you to count to 7,000. Uh, I actually feel like this is, perhaps Thani is slowing this down. Let's try and stop this code. So you can do click stop or you could hit control C in this uh, window. Uh, it even tells us system notification helpers. You, it, an application has crashed. Um, but if we go back here, and we're going to have to hit reload now because we're editing the same file in 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I should have hit discard. Oh, well. Um, so let me just run it here. And you notice this is a lot quicker. You notice Genie has actually a lot better performance than Thani. This is quite interesting because it's probably in the same amount of time. What are we at here right now? Do you think the same? Whoa, I hit. Okay, so I hit. Uh, I hit. I hit. Um, Control C and the window went away. I couldn't actually stop it to see where I was. Let's see if we can manage to stop it to see where we were. So, um, in order to do that, uh, yeah, I'm 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 not going to be able to show you that because I don't want to get into things that I'm going to be teaching later on. So. Enough said. We can just look at the numbers, and you can see right now uh, we're actually at seven hundred thousand, and now we just hit a million. And so uh, I think that's six digits. Y yeah. So I think we're at. Yeah, I think that's two point eight, two point nine. Now that we're at three million, so so interesting to see that. Uh, Genie has such better performance. Kind of cool. Um, I think part of the reason, actually, and I'm I'm totally guessing on this, so if I'm wrong, you know, someone can correct me. But uh, I think part of it is because Thani's written in Python and uh, Genie's written in C plus plus. That might be part of it. Also, it might be the terminal, actually. And I I I think it's. That's probably connected to it as well. In any case, um, computers can count really fast. By the way, uh, the interesting thing about this is is that if I wasn't printing the values, the computer could actually uh, print or, or count more quickly. The fact that I'm printing them is slowing it down. So I hit Control C to stop that. So you can see now this is a this is a uh, while loop. I just thought of something. So I can actually stop it and count and and calculate how fast it's going. So I could say while n is less than now let's say one million. Now to go one million, uh, let's go one e six. Okay, so that's one million and at this point, I mean, zero is less than one million, right? And let's run it now. Let's go F5. And now it should stop at one million. There you go. And it stopped at one million. The question is now is how long did that take? So. Uh, if I now there's a there's actually a way to do this uh, there is a way to do this in Python but there is also a way to do this in the terminal um, for the Windows users in the class I, I'll, I'll show you the way to do it I wasn't gonna show you that today but that's fine but you can actually issue the command so I've got to go to the directory uh, that this file is in. So it's probably going to be in your home directory, so you obviously you don't have to do this. Um, but now, if I issue the command, uh, let me actually move this over so that you can see more. So if I issue the command, obviously to run it, I would say Python 3 and then while 1, which is the name of the program, and yay, it runs. But it doesn't actually uh, tell me how long it's taking to get to 1 million. And in order to do that, all I have to do is put in uh, the, the word time at the beginning. And now when I run it, and it gets to 1 million, we'll have to wait slightly for this to finish. It tells me to do ta-da. So it took uh, 7 seconds, seven almost 7.5 seconds to count to a million. Okay? 
So the, the, the number you really want to look at here is real. Okay? Um, now, if we wanted to take a look at uh, the, the um, some of the stuff in terms of how to do this in Python alone without using a Linux terminal and the time command in Linux, then we could go, now once again, pydoc time um, the time module provides various functions to manipulate time values and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm trying to remember if it's yeah, so it is time. So it is time dot time. So, so in order now, I know what you're thinking. How can I get to this help uh, without a terminal? And the answer is easy. If you go into Python interpreter, so at this point you should have a mechanism to go into the Python interpreter. And um, I'm gonna just turn off the screen key at this point because it's, it's uh, blocking my view here. Um, if I go, I think it was help. Was it help time? Nope. Um, trying to remember what, what the, was it doc? No. Uh, I can't remember what it was now. I always use the PyDoc instead of... Um, anyways, it's not important. I'll, f I'll try to remember that later. It's a really the easy lookup to... Try, I'm, I can't remember what it was. But anyways, if I import time here and I simply go, okay, before the program starts, let's say start time is equal to time dot time and then after the program is finished let's say end equals time dot time and now let's print this program took Now, it's not start minus end, right? It's end minus start. Oops. Time in seconds. Or I should say seconds to, to run. OK? So I did not make this an F string. And I am using, I am using these uh, curly braces, right? So it's not going to know what to do. So I have to put an F there. And notice as soon as I did that, it recognized this as being variables. So let's hit F5 at this point, And let's see if that runs. And we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for it to finish. And so it says, there you go, this program took 7.3 seconds to run. So stuff like that, obviously now showing you this, uh, it's kind of cool that you can actually ask what time is it. That's, that, by the way, that's the epoch time. And I think that epoch time is the time since, in seconds, I think since 1970, something funny like that. I, you, we can look it up here. We can go um, Python epoch time. And... Yeah, there you go. The beginning of time is started measuring January 1st, 1970. So I don't really know. It's kind of funny. I don't really know why they chose that that specific date. But it's because, I mean, there's a lot of seconds between right now, 2020, and 1970, right? But if you subtract the numbers, you're still going to get the difference. So, so it, it works and uh, it's good. Anyways, so this is 
this is uh, an example of a loop, and I I really want to kind of um, show this to you in a different way. So let's let's actually how do we close this? Is it Control W? Yeah. Okay. So let's open this file up again because we've changed it. And at this point, I want to show you the beauty. I'm gonna I'm going to uh, change this from 1 million to, let's say, 5. Okay? And the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to show you how cool this looks and to, to understand this through the, um, the debugging module. module. So in, in this case, I'm actually going to turn uh, I'm going to turn the uh, screen key back on. And, and so now, if I hit Control F5, we go into debug mode. And now I'm going to hit, so what are my options here? Step into is F7, step over is F6, and step out is F8. So let's hit F7. No, uh, let's try this again. Debug mode. Mm. What's my error? I'm not sure what the error is here. Oh, okay. It, whatever the error was, it's gone now. Uh, I think it was a problem with uh, Thani. This is actually an older version of Thani because I just installed this uh, for my distribution, which is uh, Ubuntu 1804, so it's a couple of years old. The new version of Thani is much newer. It's version 3, and I you'll have that one when you download it off the internet. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's debug this guy. Let's click debug. And ah, I think I know what's going on here. I think it's the time thing. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this time stuff. Because I think that might be messing up the debug stuff. Um, and now let's try and run it again. And when I run this again, yeah, it goes one, two, three, four, five. But now if I hit Control F5, now it works. So maybe that time module uh, was causing some issues. Anyways, let's hit F7. And all right, first value. OK, notice on the right-hand side here, I am listing my variables. F7, uh, n equals 0. There it is. Is n less than 5? Let's replace the value of n with 0. Is 0 less than 5? True. Now it becomes while true. Now, let's go in. Let's look at n plus 1. What's n? Look over here. n is 0. Replace it with 0. Replace the 1 with a 1, because it's a literal value. Add them together. 0 plus 1 is 1. Now assign it to n. Look closely. When I hit F7, it changes to 1. Do you see how see this works? If you understand this method of execution, you can debug anything. Now it says print n. It's going to show up down here. What is the value of n? It's 1. Print 1, and the 1 shows up. It's right there. Okay, It was kind of partially hidden by the screen key. And so then you might ask, what is this none? What is that? And, and this is interesting. This is the value that print is returning. So, so for example, if I said, so, okay, I can't really modify the code right now because I'm stepping through it, but I'll show you what that means later. Print is returning nothing. None means nothing. Okay? So it's actually an object in, in, in Python, um, but it's important. Let's, let's keep going. So now we go back up to the while loop, back of the while, back to the top of the while loop, 
to the condition again. Now n is 1, so it'll be replaced, f7, with a 1. Is 1 less than, let's replace the value of the little 5 with a 5. Let's test it. Yes, 1 is less than 5. Therefore, it's a, it returns true. So when it returns true now, the while goes in. And so if I go through this quickly, it prints 1, 2, 3, 4. And now it's going to, what's going to happen here is it's going to print the 5 here. Okay. It prints it. Now look what happens. It goes up to here. Notice after 5, it still goes back up to the while. And then it replaces the n. Now look here. The n, is, n value is 5. It replaces it with a 5. Now it does the test. It says, is 5 less than 5? False. And so now look where it goes. It's done. The program is finished. It, it went to line 7 and didn't find anything there. The while loop was over. And so it determines, aha, I'm at the end of the program. OK? So that's the way the while loop works. Um, and let's actually go on to a uh, little bit more difficult type of a assignment. And that is, we, what we need to understand here is that the while is an indefinite loop. In other words, whenever you want to execute something a number of times, but you don't know beforehand how many times it needs to execute, that is the situation where we need while. Okay? So, for example, we could write a program that is adding numbers. So, for example, I'll, I'll kind of start you off here. Let's get rid of this. And um, let's say, now, in order to kind of, kind of uh, do this, I could say, I could do this a couple of different ways, okay? But I'll start it off with, uh, and I'll just say, uh, Answer or, or I should say, yeah, answer equals nothing. And I'll say here, while answer is not equal to quit. Okay? And then I'll come in here and I'll say answer equals. I had to actually set a default value um, because if I come to this line and say while answer is not quit, it's going to say I don't know what answer is and it's going to fail on me. So I had to set a default value initially and I just set it to nothing like a string but it's still nothing inside the string. And I'll say input. First I'm going to change the input here. Um, actually no, I don't want to change it to... Uh, uh, Oh, okay, I see. Here's a problem. So the problem I'm having right now is I want to ask for a number. I want to go int, input, and then I'll go like this and I'll say enter a number. And um, I'm going to tell them what this program does. So I'll say print this program adds numbers uh, until you type let's say zero okay that way we can change this okay and I'll show you how we're going to do this in a better way later. 
Um, so let's let's save this as uh, while two. Let's go file save as, and let's call this while two. Um, while answer is not equal to zero, answer is is equal to this. And now I want you to see if you can finish the rest of the program. And what I want it to do is every time you enter a number, I want it to, now in this case, this isn't going to work, right? Um, and in fact, I've actually even messed it up because because uh, my initial value, uh, my initial value can be, um, it doesn't matter what it is. I can make it equal to one, but my this I should change where I'm going to actually have a total. But the problem here now I'm running into is that if I try this, let me just try programming this for you and see like wh what's going to happen. So. If I go, uh, I, I need another variable for the total. And then I would come down here and I would go total equals total plus. I, I really don't like the variable called answer. Let's call it num. And let's go over here and let's go num. And let's say num. If I if I now after the loop is done, uh, print total and say as an f string, and I say the total is total. Okay. Um, Will this work? What do you think? Let's hit F5. And you see, we can't see enough stuff here. But there's a problem here. So let, I'm actually going to try and go uh, back here for a second to uh, Genie. And I can go reload here. But let's also open up. Uh, while two. Okay, so if I hit F5 to run this, notice now it says there's a syntax error. Okay, uh, I think I forgot that. Yeah, that's what I forgot. Yep, wonderful. I'm making beginner mistakes. Okay, and we're done. Gosh, that was a quick program. This program adds number until you type zero. The total is zero. It didn't even ask me a number. So notice here, it said while num is not equal to zero, but it is equal to zero right there. So what should I do? Maybe I should make it something that's not zero. OK, let's make it one. That's not zero. Let's try it now. And now when I run this, it says, enter an, uh, this program adds numbers until you type zero. Enter a number. All right, three. Enter a number. Uh, six. Enter a number. Uh, one. What's the total so far? 10, right? So now let's type in 0. And now let's get out. It says 10. By the way, why does that work? Because I did I add 0 to the sum? I did. Because this line executed 
before it went back up and checked to see if 0 is not equal to 0. And so really, this is kind of a, 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 a cop-out way of doing it. I'm, there is a better way of doing this. And let me show you how to do this. So I would actually, personally, the way I would do this is I would not put those. I would actually have to put total in first. I still need total. But here, I'm just going to say while true. Okay, I'm not going to use the while running that they had in the in the textbook example. Um, and at this point, I would say num. Yep, that's that's good. And now I would say I'm not even going to do the int here. I'm going to leave that for later. Because right here, I'm going to put an if statement. And now I'm going to say, if num equals quit, now I'm going to say break. OK? Then, then here's the cool part. Uh, then I'm going to say total equals total plus num, but now num is a string. So I'm going to put the int here and add it to total. OK? And at this point, I think this is a much better looking program. If you understand the two codes, uh, it lets, well, first of all, let's test to see if this works before I, and, and let's get rid of the zero there. Uh, this program adds numbers until you type quit. Okay, so let's go. I had to use double quotes there. I couldn't use single quotes. If I did use single quotes, I'd have to go like this. I'd have to escape them. Okay? So let's hit F5 now. And gosh, I wish this window wouldn't always block my view here. So enter a number uh, 1, 6, 3. Enter a number, quit. The total is 10. I actually prefer the way this looks. Now, so what is this break statement doing? Well, when you hit this break statement, it, it basically exits out of the while loop here. So it's not going to go back up. As soon as you execute break, it just jumps right out of the while loop and goes to the next line, which is line 9. So notice, if I did not do that, this line would fail. Why? Because I'd be trying to change the string num into an int. So that's, that's, that's good that I broke out first. And you notice I don't change uh, num to an int on line 5, because if I did, that would fail if I typed in quit. First, I want to do a check. And then, if it's, if it's not that number, then I can go, right? Oh, well, by the way, um, you know, if you wanted to even make another type of a check, you could say, uh, num dot is I think it's called is digit so uh, in this case it wouldn't just quit on the word quit it would quit on or you know I mean I could have a let's let's actually try this uh, so enter a number uh, two oops the total is zero nope uh, Oh, right, 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 right. I have to put a not in there. So, so 
So I have to go. I was, I was almost about to type a exclamation point, but I remembered. So not a digit break. Not, you don't want to break if it is a digit. So let's try this again. Uh, oh, it's blocking my view again. We're gonna, I'm going to have to figure out a solution for that. And um, at this point, I would type in 2, 3. And now if I typed in quit, or I could even type in Q, and it would say the total is 5. Now, I didn't type in quit, but that's because Q is not a digit. And so it, is Q a digit? No, Q is not a digit. So that's false. In order to turn that into true, I need a not there. OK? Um, however, I think it's better if I was to do this like this. I could say now break here. I could say, now I could say, elif not num is digit. And so now uh, I would break on that as well. But Bef now, you would think, okay, well, what's the purpose of doing this if, and the reason for this is because now I could put in a print statement here, and I could say invalid number, okay? And I could even put a message here and say something like print done or something to signify that you know you wanted to quit and you're done adding so if I ran this if I entered uh, 2 and 3 and typed in Q it would say invalid number and it would then it would say total is 5 whereas if I ran it again and I typed in 2 and 3 and then typed in quit it would say done and the total is 5. Notice the difference? Um, yeah. So there you go. So that's probably the way I'd want to do this. Um, I'd like you guys to um, write a for loop, uh, write, not a for loop. I want you guys to write a while loop. And I would like you guys to write a while loop that will do a few things. So I want the, uh, your, the output of your program to go one, two, three, all the way down to 10. So one, to, I want your program to print out the numbers 1 to 10 using a while loop. Then I want you to write another program that does the opposite. I want you to write a program that starts at 10 and counts backwards down all the way to 1. Okay, so write two, two while loops. They can be in the same program. You can call it counting.py. Print the numbers from 1 to 10, and then print the numbers from 10 to 1. Okay, give that a shot. Pause the video now and try it. All right, we're back. Uh, before I continue and show you the solutions to those, I wanted to show you why this didn't work. So if I kind of go up here and um, show you why why was it not working 
when I try to show you the help on time. And this, as you can see, it's not working. And the reason why it's not working is because time is a module. So I actually have to import time first. And then if I go help time, now it works. Yay. OK? So now you could go down. And, and by the way, if you want to search for something, you go forward slash. And you could go time, bracket, bracket. And then it'll show you it like that. Oh, actually, it's the brackets aren't working. I think I have to escape them. But anyways, uh, you can just scroll down and There's a whole bunch of stuff, and and that's the one. That's the one I was using. Okay, um, it, to get out of this, by the way, you just type Q, and then you get out of that help, and then to get out, obviously, of the interpreter, uh, you would type in Control D. However, I'm going to go back into the interpreter, and what I wanted to show you was is digit because I didn't really do that in the because when I show you this code here this line 9 might seem a little bit confusing to you because line 9 is not like line 6 line 6 says if num equals quit alright there's a definite equals equals which means it's a comparison if that variable equals that string it returns true there's no equals or greater than or less than here. How is this working? And the answer is this num is digit is returning a true or a false. So let me show you that. So if I go, let's say, for example, uh, something like hi, and I go dot, it's a string. So is digit works on a string is digit false. Notice that I don't need a less than or a greater than. It returns a true or false directly to the if block, to the if statement. In this case, it was an elif. OK? So my code is like, you could see it. It's right there, right? So now, but that's false. I want it to say, I want it to say invalid. So let's see what if I type in a number. So if I type in, let's say something like, okay, I better move it up again a little bit. If I type in two dot is digit. Now it says true. Okay. What if I typed in a two? What if I just typed in a two that's not a string? Now it says syntax error. Because is digit only works with strings. But what it does is it says, listen, is that string convertible into a int, right? So like, for example, if I did this, if I went int two, that works, right? OK, int can change that into, uh, into an integer. But can int change? high into an integer? No, it can't. So before we try and do something that's not going to work, we can use isDigit to test to see if it's going to work. Right? So we can go isDigit true. But that's not what I did because I want it to say invalid. So really, I want it to say false. So I'm saying true here. And the, re the way I do that is I put a not in front of it. And the not will change it from true to false. So um, if I even make it simpler for you, if I go not true, that's false. If I go not false, that's true. So the not just actually flips it, OK? So I wanted it to execute if it's not a number. And that's how I did it. That's what I typed. So I hope that's clear now, because I know I haven't shown you that before. And so I wanted you to not not you know scratch your head and say, oh, what the heck? There's no comparison there. And it's because, like I said, 
the is digit is returning a true or false directly. So uh, here is the solution to So um, we can actually just let's comment this whole code out. And I'm gonna just gonna go like that and like this. Now that all that code is commented out, it won't run. And I'm gonna say something like um, let's just say n equals zero, and we'll say while n is less than ten and then we'll go print n and then we have to increment n so we'll say n equals n plus one and now let's see if this works by the way we got to get rid of the rest of the stuff down here so let's hit it and it doesn't quite work notice it it starts at zero and it ends at nine. Now that is 10 digits, but it's not starting and ending where I want it to. So I think what I need to do is I need to move this line, control X, up here. And if I do that, now it does what I want it to. And so I wanted you to see that where changing the order of adding and printing affects what number where you start and end at. Um, now, obviously, the other solution isn't very difficult. I'm just going to control C, control V here. And instead of starting at zero, I'm going to start at 10. And I'm going to, instead of adding one, I'm going to subtract one. And now let's see if this works. And by the way, let's just uh, put in a print statement here. Oh, I can't type. Um, just so that they're separated with a space. And when we run it, uh-oh. Oh, right, it's the same variable, okay. Uh, we've gotta change this we got to say while n is uh, greater than z zero. All right, let's try running it again. Um, let's put some space there. There we go. Okay, F5. All right, well, the first program was okay again, but the second program, the second part's not. Because again, it's starting at nine and ending at zero. I want it to start at 10. Um, now, instead of flipping these two as I did before, now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a different solution. Um, I'm gonna change this to start at 11. And let's see if it works now. Well, it's kind of working. It is starting at 10 now, but it's definitely not ending at 1. So what else could I change without changing the order of these guys as I did before? And the answer is I could do that. So if I run it now, you can see that... Um, Oh no, uh, I messed up. So I'd have to say greater than uh, or equal to zero. And this isn't working either because this is getting to zero. So let's try one. and that worked. The question is, do you understand why that works? So do you think that that is easier to understand? Or if I was to go, if I was to simply go um, back to this method, 
because I, I want you to see them all at the same time. I am going to turn this off. This is really beginning to bug me at this point. So, um, I wanted to start at 10, right? And I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to go, oops, like that, and then like that. And now let's run this one. And unfortunately, I can't see all of it. There. Okay, so this works. 10 to 1, 10 to 1. All right. So both those solutions are valid. Let's take a look at them and let's see how they're different. Here, line 22, we start at 11. We say, well, n is greater than 1. But the first thing we do is we subtract 1. Then we print it. So when is this going to stop? Well, it'll stop when it's equal to 1. Is 1 greater than 1? No. So it's not going to do that one. What about 2? Is 2 greater than 1? Yes. So 2 will be the last iteration. So if we go in and we go 2 minus 1, that's 1, and it'll print 1. So 1 will be the last number it prints. Now let's compare that to the last iteration on this loop. In this one, uh, the last iteration is going to be, we have to look at this right here. It's not going to be 0 because 0 is not greater than 0. The last iteration is going to be 1. 1 is greater than 0. So it prints the 1, then it subtracts 1 from 1, and it says, aha, now it's 0. And is 0 greater than 0? No, so it stops. Which one do you guys like better? This code or this code? Personally, I like this one better. I like the second one better. Okay? Because I think it's um, I think it's it's easier to understand because I I just, I don't have to start at 11, and I don't have to say n is less, is greater than 1 when I want to stop at 1. It makes more sense to me. It's more readable, more understandable, the second one, the highlighted one. Okay? Well, oops. Um, now what I want to do is, my next assignment is to show you, the, so I've shown you the break statement, right? So just to show you the break statement again, um, let's, I can, for example, um, take this code out for the time being. And if I run this, I'm just going to get 1 to 10. Now, I want to st stop after 5. So I could say something like here with the break statement again, if n equals 5, okay, I could say break. Now if I run this, notice it prints the 5 out. Um, yeah, it prints the 5 out. Now, question here is why does it print the 5 out? Because 4 plus 1 is 5. Right? What if we what if we did not want the five to print out? So in other words, when n is four, we add one to it, then it prints it. How would we so we, we'd have to move this whole if statement and put it here. Okay. And now if we run it, now we'd only get to four. You see the difference there? It depends on where you put the if statement. Because now if, it, if we're at um, 4, and it would say plus 1 is 5, if n equals 5, there you go. So now it's only go, going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. If we put it before the n equals n plus 1, it goes up to 5. 
But here's an interesting situation I'd like to ask you. What if we simply did not want to print the 5 but wanted to print 1 to 4 and then 6 to 10? In this case, we wouldn't use break. We don't want to exit the loop completely. We just want to skip the rest of that iteration. And that is using the word continue. Personally, I am looking at you, camera. Um, or maybe I should say, I'm looking at you, Guido. Uh, he's the guy that actually wrote the language. I know the reason why they used continue. It's because it's the same as other languages like C, C++. However, personally, in terms of the language of English, I think it would have been a better idea to call this skip. Because that's really what it's doing. So when you see the word continue, I want your brain to think of the word skip. So what it does now is it skips the rest. So let's run this. It skips the rest of the loop, but it doesn't exit the loop. So notice now it'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So all we did there is we skipped the rest of the loop, which is printing the number. Okay? We skipped line 22. And so it goes back up to line 17. It's, it skips the rest of the loop, whatever is left. So for example, if we said, um, if we said, let, let's say for example, if we took this out and we typed in continue right here, what do you think is going to happen? Let's try it. Uh huh. Guess what? We're in an infinite loop at this point. We're not doing anything. All that's happening is, is it's saying continue, go back up to the while. What's n? n is 0. Is 0 less than 10? Yes, it is. Go into the loop. Continue, skip the rest of the code. Go up to the top. Is 0 less than 10? Yes, it is. This is never going to end. Okay, I have to hit Control C to quit that. So, because n is not changing, okay? Um, what if I was to put continue somewhere else? I mean, whatever's below it gets skipped. That's why we needed it to be in a in an, in an if statement. Really, you don't usually just put continue on its own. It would come in an if block. If you would say if some condition, then skip the rest of the loop and go to the top of the loop again. Don't exit the loop. That's what break is for. Make sense? Okay. So um, at this point, I would like you to uh, write a while loop that prints out all the even numbers from 1 to 20. Okay? Write a while loop that prints out all the even numbers from 1 to 20. Okay? Give it a shot. <laughs> 